the Public Works Committee of the Metro Council to order. Uh, our agenda says 5.30, it's 7.50. Thanks to everybody for hanging in. Um, uh, before uh, we get started with our initial motion, um, uh, staff, I believe you uh, indicated uh, all those that were present. Um, if you could please repeat that for the record, please. Sure. Uh, present, Henderson, Allen, Benedict, Bradford, Evans, Gamble, Hurt, Nash, O'Connell, Roten, and Young. Thank you. Um, thanks everybody very much for being here. Um, uh, Vice Chair Young, uh, you are recognized uh, for the motion on digital meetings, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, pursuant to Governor Lee's executive order number 16 regarding electronic meetings as extended by executive orders number 34 and 51, I make a motion that this committee meeting agenda constitutes essential business of the Metropolitan Council and that meeting electronically is necessary to protect the health, safety, and welfare of Tennesseans in light of the COVID-19 outbreak. So um, I so move, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you. Uh, moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, Aye. thank you. Aye. Okay. Um, Alrighty, I, I'm going to uh, spare us a, a chair report since we are running uh, so late. Um, but just by way of uh, introduction and uh, to segue into our meeting, um, because we do have a lot of items on our agenda and we have uh, uh, many guests uh, with us um, uh, uh, today, um, what I'm going to do is, you know, if you want to speak, obviously council members uh, raise your hand um, and that will be true as well uh, for guests. And so um, if I do uh, recognize you, I will just say that you are recognized and then you can unmute yourself to speak. And then please remember to uh, remute uh, yourself uh, subsequent to that. And in that way, hopefully we can uh, keep the meeting uh, moving along and um, address any reverb. And so you know, just to get started, I want to kind of preface this with uh, news in both uh, the kind of the public works uh, realm. Um, we all heard uh, uh, last week the announcement from the mayor's office um, about a team uh, led by uh, Shanna Whitelaw of the water department um, that is going to be uh, moving over uh, to uh, public works um, uh, with the departure of uh, former director Sturdivant. And so uh, we're, we're so pleased to have members of that team with us uh, today. Um, and uh, John Honeysucker is gonna continue uh, serving with us as a liaison uh, for uh, water and this, this whole team as we kind of converge uh, uh, water and, and public works uh, together. And so with that, um, Mr. Honeysucker, you are uh, recognized. Thank you, Council Lady. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. Okay, I have the very distinct honor of introducing uh, two outstanding people that I'll be partnering with. Um, the Interim Director of uh, Public Works, Ms. Shannon Whitelaw, and also the Chief Engineer, uh, Mr. Jorge Rivera. So with that being said, uh, Shannon, please. Shanna. Hi, <laughs> unmuting. Good evening, we're at evening now. I just want to take a moment to say hello to everybody and introduce myself. I was really um, honored to be offered this opportunity by the mayor and look forward to working with all of y'all and working with um, all the leadership at Public Works. Um, as you could read in the announcement, my background is in private industry, did a lot of large municipal waters um, projects and other types of projects that were construction and design work. And then in the last 14 years at Water Services, I have progressively focused on process review, organizational improvement, strategic planning, big picture ideas like that, which I think lends itself to what um, we're trying to accomplish here. So I'm excited about the challenge. I'm looking forward to engaging with Pay Damasio, all the team at Public Works, the leadership, before as we get ready to make recommendations. So we've got a lot of hard work ahead of us in the next few months working toward um, recommendations by the end of the year. Um, to let you know, I plan to transition over the next couple of weeks with full time there at Public Works on August 3rd, but I'm already 
me getting engaged and learning a lot from everyone. Um, I'm very fortunate. I think it was probably one of my best strategic moves was uh, bringing John Honeysucker and Jim Schneider along with me for the ride, as we say. Um, so they'll be doing double duty um, for both water services and public works. So don't hesitate to reach out to them as well as myself and the other members of public works as um, you need to. So with that, I'd like to introduce Jorge and let him tell you a little bit about himself. Thanks. All right, I'm jumping on. Can everybody hear me and see me? Great, let me see. I'm trying to get this in focus. All right, great. Well, it's a, it's nice to meet everybody finally. Uh, thank you, council members, for having me on today. Uh, it's been um, a, an interesting couple of months coming over and and uh, trying to get acclimated to a uh, staff and a, and a new position with nobody around. So. <laughs> trying to learn a little bit about what we do at Public Works and, and specifically in the engineering section. I'm excited about, um, you know, the things that are happening here. I think that we're there, that we have a lot of good opportunities coming. Um, looks like I might have some bad connection here. Is that, am I still visible and audible? Audible, not visible. Are Right, you are audible, but not visible. Audible, but not visible, okay. So keep on talking, you're good. <laughs> okay, anyway, um, so I'm excited about uh, the opportunities that we have here in engineering. Just uh, my background uh, is more transportation related. Uh, just previously, I was with the city of Austin working in smart mobility. So uh, pretty much anything that was transportation technology uh, in particular, um, I was um, in charge of connected and automated vehicle technology, system architecture, intelligent transportation systems for uh, deployment and installation of connected and automated vehicle technology in the city of Austin, but anything else related to that. So Vision Zero, intersection safety, mobility hubs, micro mobility. Um, and so I've got a pretty vast uh, background in, in, in transportation, uh, both in, in capital projects, um, in the private side, working in heavy civil construction, operations and maintenance, um, and and traffic and signals and, and everything else. Um, so I'm excited to come and support a lot of these things. I'm also excited to come and try and test out new things that maybe haven't been here in Nashville to improve our pedestrian safety, uh, as well as accessibility for, for all our mobility customers in Nashville. It's so damn long, and it's like... Everything that he's done. And Mr. Honeysucker, Mr. Honeysucker, you are not muted, sir. Remute, please. Go ahead, Mr. Rivera. I apologize. No, that's okay. That's okay. And so again, I'm just here and excited to support. Um, I support the council members, support the public, uh, support the department, and and all the all the great things that we can do here in Nashville. Um, I think you'll be. Uh, I think you'll be happy at the relationships I can bring. Um, and, and so uh, I'm excited to work with all of you. Uh, and again, you know, just to bring uh, a better safety record and that equity and accessibility to, to all of our um, community visitors and, and others that uh, are here in the Nashville region. Uh, thank you so very much. We uh, appreciate you, uh, uh, Shanna and, and Jorge, both uh, for being here um, uh, to introduce yourselves. And um, uh, Mr. Averis, we welcome you to Nashville. Um, and, and Shanna, we uh, look forward uh, to your leadership. Um, we've got a lot of great staff at Public Works. Um, and I know uh, that you intend to uh, listen to them and um, hear about their ideas and what's working and what's not working. And um, so I'm really optimistic about this leadership change and just want to uh, thank you both. Um, and, and a special thank you this evening for um, sticking with us because I know we are uh, really running behind. So um, colleagues, we'll have plenty more time to um, uh, speak uh, with Ms. Whitelaw and um, Mr. Riveros uh, in, in coming weeks and months um, about the uh, the, the work that they will be doing. Um, but as we are running so far behind, um, if, if we can, um, let's just move uh, right on into our agenda, please. Okay. All righty. Um, I am going to- uh, Real quickly. Uh, pardon? Just real quickly. I feel like we just absorbed a pretty significant uh, 
moment of departmental transition, and I, I, I think it is maybe worth taking a few minutes here because I'm I will say I'm confused. I don't know what it means to converge water and public works. Um, so I, I might be a few minutes of elaboration there. Okay, um, I, I I appreciate that, uh, Mr. O'Connell, as former chair of uh, the Public Works Committee. Um, I, I would refer council to um, the letter from the mayor of, of last week, which was pretty uh, uh, lengthy and explanatory, but I absolutely do appreciate. And as long as Ms. Whitelaw and, uh, 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 and I hope Ms. Whitelaw is still here. Um, Hi, uh, Ms. Whitelaw, if you are, please feel to uh, unmute. And um, I guess maybe if you want to just expand a little bit on your um, uh, uh, intro and kind of um, speak to uh, this uh, uh, transition and this team and um, uh, kind of what your uh, uh, work in, in the coming weeks and months will be, and then also uh, long-term kind of the, the, the path that this work anticipates, please. Sure. Sure, to give a little um, explanation, um, one of the mayor's request or one of the mayor's campaign promises was to look at a Department of Transportation and to look at seeing is there synergy in, in realigning and looking at ways to improve organizationally things at Public Works and across the department as a whole. So one of the things we're looking at is how would we do that? We'd be working with Faye Massimo, working with people within all the leadership within Public Works to look at ways to align and to structure possibilities of if a Department of Transportation makes sense, and if so, how, what would it look like? And then what would happen to and how would we um, integrate or separate or modify the other services that um, Public Works does, which one is huge, is solid waste and recycling and beautification in those areas. So what we're going to do over the next six months is harness all the resources that we have. And some of that is coming from water services and some of the organizational things that, that we do to, um, to look at things and to, to make recommendations. I mean, there's a lot of great things going on over at Public Works and they do so many things really well, but sometimes looking at it from a transportation element is different than looking at it from a solid waste element. And so how do we, how do we look at both of those separate and together? And then what do we do moving forward if a Department of Transportation makes sense for the city? So we are tasked with making recommendations um, to the administration by the end of the year. Um, from there, I don't know. We'll see. Does that help? Any other questions? And then, um, Ms. Whitelaw, you and I had um, spoken about how um, colleagues, I mean, there really is a convergence here of just kind of, you know, process management, our right of way. Uh, Metro Stormwater actually used to be in public works um, historically. Um, uh, Mr. Snyder, uh, who was on the team, used to be at public works. Um, so, you know, so much of this uh, work, whether for the purpose of transportation, but just kind of operationally um, and capital projects management and so forth, you know, does happen within our uh, right away. So there, there definitely are some synergies there. Um, uh, but Councilman O'Connell, uh, you, you had uh, requested for some additional time and I appreciate it. Is there a question that you have particular uh, uh, for Ms. Whitelaw or Mr. Riveros and then colleagues? I'm, I'm just looking maybe if we can give this uh, maybe uh, five more minutes. So if other colleagues have questions, um, uh, please just do your raise hand button and I will recognize you. But uh, Councilman O'Connell, I will recognize you again um, first uh, if, if you have a particular question. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. And I apologize. I, I had seen a pair of press releases and somehow if a letter had been sent, I must have missed it. Um, so I will go see if I can uh, discover that later. But um, I think in reading those releases, it wasn't, fundamentally apparent to me that we would be seeing, uh, you know, I, I guess I must have not kind, I must not have understood the entirety of the operational pieces. So for those staff members just named who are doing double duty, I mean, is this a realignment? Is this, I, I guess, just how does this work from a, um, are we making some roles redundant? Is this a cost savings measure? I, I'm just, you know, I'm curious about how how that's going to work from an operational standpoint. Ms. Whitelaw, you're recognized to respond, please. Thank you. Thank you for recognition. Um, there, this is a temporary um, assignment 
for all of us. I'm in the interim director. So it's um so John and Jim, Jim Schneider and John Honeysucker will be doing double duty as um, Chair Henderson mentioned, a lot of things are crossover anyway. So a lot of times in communications and discussions that are water related or sewer related or stormwater related, there happens to be something related to what else is in the right of way. So there's a lot of synergy on those kinds of conversations. So there is no intent that there's redundancy. It's more of a, a transition of picking up the, the things that are the same and the things that could be done together. So we're not at a point of any sort of redundant um, relationship or jobs or, or anything like that. This is really about them coming and supporting me. I have a lot of a history in process, a lot of history in in big construction, but Mr. Schneider has years of public works history and has relationships that I think will be great as we're doing conversations and we're learning. And Mr. Honeysucker has a wealth of knowledge as well on how the, the workings of between public works and water services come together. So we're looking forward to being a part of the team at public works and um, working with them to learn different things and how we can all kind of come together with, with ideas. So we welcome ideas and suggestions. Okay. Madam Chair, you're muted. Sorry. Oh my goodness. Um, uh, so any colleagues, any other questions um, for uh, Ms. Whitelaw or uh, Mr. Riveros? And I, I think Mr. Rivera shared this and, and maybe Mr. Honeysucker did at the top, but um, he is our director of engineering, um, which uh, with Shanna as interim director in public works, um, that uh, director of engineering role is also just right at the top of the org, uh, org chart for, uh, for public works. Um, just so y'all kind of understand how that, uh, that team is structured. Um, I'm not seeing any other raised hands other than um, Mr. Honeysucker. Mr. Honeysucker, did you wish to be recognized uh, again? Yes, ma'am, Councilor. I just want to yes. make sure that the council members are aware that I will be reaching out to them, setting up 30-minute uh, individual meetings with uh, with the council members uh, for them to have to have any questions and concerns within the district and also the at-large mem uh, members also. Thank you. Okay, I appreciate that. Um, all righty. Um, uh, with that, um, we... Uh going to move on into the agenda. Um, uh, firstly, we're going to take uh, one item out of order, colleagues, on the very end of our agenda. Um, I have a bill um, that is on third reading uh, that was a, a re-referral uh, uh, BL 2022-88 uh, pertaining to street trees. Um, and because there's some uh, discussions and amendments and a, a vote on that, um, I'm going to turn that over uh, to Vice Chair Young. Uh, Vice Chair Young, you are uh, recognized to take that on. Um, so that is the last item on our agenda is moving to the top. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Let me get it pulled up. We have uh, substitute, substitute Bill 2020-288, Henderson, Allen, and Benedict. And it amends the Metro code related to street trees. Uh, and I, as Chair Henderson said, I believe there's also a proposed amendment to what has already been substituted. So Chair Henderson, you are recognized. Thank you, Vice Chair Young. And I apologize for not scrolling through 12 pages of the agenda to get to the very last item. <laughs> I just thought that might take me two minutes to get down there. Um, okay, uh, so colleagues, this um, is a bill that I, I am uh, really uh, pleased with as an expansion of uh, the sidewalk regulations that we passed last term. Uh, so uh, as I often refer to our expanded uh, sidewalk regulations, um, you know, it has a strategic framework uh, that is built on uh, our major and collector street plan and our Nashville Next General Plan. Um, so it utilizes uh, centers, proximity to centers, um, you know, on an arterial, on a collector, and uh, our requirements are sort of tiered in that way. Um, this is a first step on uh, street trees uh, requirements. So basically this bill is saying uh, that where sidewalks are required in centers, so in our Nashville Next Centers. So um, 
don't have that map for you all, but if you go online to planning and look at that, they really do reach uh, all the way across our 532 square miles, um, you know, suburban centers, midtown and otherwise. So the only place in our city right now uh, that street trees are required is within our downtown code. So really right in that core of Councilman O'Connell's district, but elsewhere in this city, all those miles, we do not require street trees anywhere in the city. And so uh, centers seem like a very logical place to start. Um, additionally, we're doing it just for commercial and multifamily development. Some of our centers do touch um, uh, uh, residential development, um, single family residential. One probably wouldn't think that when they think about what the Nashville Next intent was for centers. Um, but uh, so I think that, um, uh, just as a start, um, uh, confines it kind of geographically to centers um, and to uh, development type. And so that's a good way to kind of put our toe in the water um, uh, for this. And so uh, the draft of this bill was online um, back in uh, March, um, got a lot of public comment um, from engineers, landscape architects, all that feedback has informed this bill. It passed the planning commission unanimously um, and uh, Rebecca Doan at Water, uh, Jennifer Smith at Public Works, our horticulturalist, um, uh, uh, Stephen Kivett, our urban forester, and many, many more staff, too many to name, many on Public Works, um, uh, Mr. York, Mr. McCormick, um, and, and others um, are working now on a, a specification document. Um, it is in its final draft form. Uh, we slowed this bill down to make sure that traveled uh, with uh, the bill and that it would be ready uh, upon passage. Um, and so uh, we've worked on that um, and I think it's in a good uh, place. And so um, uh, uh, with that, that describes the bill. And then um, I can also describe this amendment. Um, well, which, uh, Madam, yes, Madam Chair, would you like to go ahead and move your bill? Um, uh, yes, sir. I would like to move this bill. <laughs> And is there a second? second. Thank you. And Madam Chair, you're recognized on the amendment as well. Um, so the amendment, I don't know what page that is in your really big packet, um, but uh, essentially um, it uh, kind of reintroduces um, uh, in the area where we kind of reference out to um, uh, our urban forestry recommended tree list. Um, we're updating the name of that list. Um, it used to be recommended and unrecommended trees and shrubs. It was a little um, uh, loquacious, um, so we've abbreviated that. And then also really just to kind of put a marker down from a quality standpoint and the whole purpose of this bill, right, is to have walkable um, uh, shady uh, centers and address our heat island effect. Um, so canopy trees shall be installed. Um, except where conflicts with overhead electrical power lines exist. In those instances, understory trees may be substituted. So that's an addition on this amendment. Um, as well, uh, we wanted to codify in addition to uh, having it in the specifications document um, so that it was in keeping with the tree bill um, that we also passed last year. So really our sidewalk regs plus the big tree bill last year and this bill are all working together. Um, we said that the owner of the property frontage shall execute and record a restrictive covenant agreeing to these maintenance responsibilities. So the owner of the property frontage along which the street trees are installed shall maintain the trees um, installed per this title. Um, so that's important for us as a committee to consider. So the, it, the onus is on the property owner to maintain the trees. Um, and so that language is in there. And then also um, just in an abundance of caution for the extra little city works checkoffs and process standpoint, we've done a lot of good work on implementation and we're gonna do um, a, a delayed effective date, um, not very long, just to August the 3rd, um, which is also happens to be my sweet daughter's birthday. So hello to her. Okay, that describes the amendment. All right, is there a second on the amendment? Second. And any discussion? Uh, I am, let's see, scrolling through. Uh, Councilmember Hurt on the amendment. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. How are you? I uh, want to ask. It's lovely, my friend. Good. I wanted to ask the sponsor about the prioritization of where the trees will be placed and also is there a penalty 
to the property owners who agree to maintain the trees but fail to do so? Um, so, Council Lady Hurt, um, we do not have um, a, a, a codified penalty for that purpose. Um, at present, you know, the urban forester, say, you know, if you've had a, a uh, you know, an SP zoning or, or something that, you know, you had trees required per your landscape plan, um, uh, you know, the, the urban forester just kind of sends you a notice and a reminder, um, you know, here you go, uh, this tree needs to be replaced and, um, and then follows up on that. Um, so we do not anticipate uh, a, a, any kind of uh, a penalty. And I think, um, you know, uh, in, I, I think just kind of getting started with this, um, I think we should probably just work uh, within the same uh, process that the urban forester uh, currently uses, um, and, and that should be uh, sufficient. As to priority, um, Council Lady, what this is just doing is, um, you know, when you go online, um, uh, Nashville.gov, planning, transportation, sidewalks, and you click on a parcel um, that you are going to redevelop um, uh, as an engineer or developer. Um, there's a widget um, uh, with a GIS mapping and all that that says sidewalks are required here. Um, and so what this will now say through GIS mapping is if this if sidewalks are required and it is in a center and it is a uh, commercial or multifamily development, um, it will also say um, uh, street trees required. So effectively, this is augmenting our existing uh, sidewalk requirements so that in centers, those areas that we um, already, um, by planning general plan, want to be more dense, want to be more walkable, um, that seems a very logical place uh, to start. Um, and I, I'd be happy, uh, uh, Council Lady, I can ask, uh, just uh, kind of pen a note for staff. Um, uh, but uh, if, if you would like, um, I can send a link uh, for the, uh, the the Nashville Next uh, Centers map, um, just so you can see um, how broadly those, those centers do uh, reach all across our city and, and touch various areas. Uh, thank you. I'm, I'm pretty familiar with um uh, with that uh <clears throat> so thank you the question that that i needed answered you you really did answer because a lot of it is more with the, the new development which is a good thing thank you uh looks like council member gamble Thank you, Vice Chair. Uh, yeah, I have a question regarding, uh, I guess, in lieu of, just like the sidewalk uh, with new development, if if there was some reason that uh, the sidewalk uh, was not needed or, or not wanted and the uh, developer put money in the in lieu of uh, sidewalk fund, is that, would that same option be available for uh, the street trees, and I do applaud you for bringing this up. I, I, the idea of having more trees uh, outside of the downtown uh, center is, is great, uh, but just wanted to find out also if there's some kind of mechanism or something for if the tree is not um, needed or wanted with the particular development, if there's if there's a, a, another uh, fund or something that, that monies can go to for other development. I appreciate that. Um, we uh, discussed because, uh, you know, we, we did kind of quantify the value of a tree density unit um, uh, with last year's, uh, uh, last summer's uh, tree bill. Um, but because we were um, effectively adding the street tree requirement to the sidewalk regs, we felt that the existing um, contribution in lieu of sidewalk construction he would basically just kind of incorporate this tree piece. We're kind of thinking of the trees as a feature of the sidewalk, um, it, you know, within that green zone or furnishing zone. And so, um, you know, we started uh, with this legislation looking at, okay, understory trees every 20 feet and canopy trees every 30. And um, you know, I, I know uh, specifically from, you know, the waiver process that we have for sidewalks um, and even more so for trees, uh, it, it's so context sensitive, Council Lady Gamble. I mean, it's just, you know, you got to, 
you got an intersection, you got a, a, a water pipe, you got a phone pole, you got a, you know, and so, um, uh, you know, the, the waiver process that we have in place uh, for sidewalks when somebody's wanting like an alternative design or, oh, you know, I can't, I can't do the five foot furnishing zone, I can only do is four, that's going to have implications on trees. And so, you know, urban forestry will be at the table for that conversation. Um, but at present, we haven't really established because we did not codify a specific, you must have this many trees in this distance. We can't really say, okay, we're waiving that, thus you you pay this, right? Um, it, it's um, in the same way that we would if we said, okay, uh, you need to build a sidewalk on all sides of this property. And then, oh, you know what? Actually, we're going to only have you because of your topo issues or your stormwater issues. We're just going to have you build the sidewalk out here and you can contribute in lieu on this neighborhood side, right? Um, that's kind of the the, the trade off um, in the waiver process for sidewalks, but I'm I'm open to to that. It, it was something we that we talked about, um, but I don't think at this time. I think we really just need to get kind of a year under our belt of seeing how this goes. Um, you know, when people are trying to get these trees in, working with staff. Um, you know, how how does it go? Um, and then we can always kind of codify more. Um, but at present, we have not kind of hyper codified specifically, you will have this many trees. So without that, it doesn't really lend itself to an in lieu. Thank you. Campbell, did you have follow up? No, that answers my question. Thank you. All right, taking another look. I do not see any other hands. Uh, so those in favor of amendment one, go ahead and say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Uh, amendment one has been adopted. Is there anyone seeing recognition on the substitute bill as amended? Do not see that. Uh, all those in favor of the substitute bill as amended, excuse me, as amended, if you'll say aye. Aye. And those opposed. All right, well, Madam Chair, uh, you have uh, your, your bill as amended, as, uh, as substituted, uh, pass unanimously, and I will turn this back over to you. Thank you, Vice Chair. Appreciate that. Um, thank you, colleagues. Appreciate your support of uh, this bill. Um, I also welcome uh, anybody and everybody that would like to sign on to this bill. Um, please don't hesitate uh, to email the clerk. Um, when we passed our sidewalk regulations, um, our, our bill last term, um, we had all but two council members um, uh, signed on. So we had 37 co-sponsors for that um, sidewalk legislation, which is a really strong statement from our body about how much we valued sidewalks. And so if you value trees and shaded sidewalks, um, I invite you, I would love to have every, every member of the Public Works Committee um, signed on uh, to this bill. Um, okay, uh, with that, um, we will move back into our regular agenda. Um, resolutions uh, off the top here, resolution 2023-85, O'Connell, Murphy, and Henderson authorizes a Nashville uh, underground LLC to construct and install an aerial encroachment a sign at 105 Broadway. Uh, Councilman O'Connell, you're recognized. Councilman O'Connell, are you still present? I know we're all so tired. Are you still here? Can we move it to the heel? Yep, Councilman O'Connell, last call. All right, we're gonna move that to the heel. And... Okay, somebody, somebody needs to mute there. Um, okay, uh, RS 2020-401, uh, Henderson and Mendez accepts a grant from Flow Inc. Uh, doing business as uh, CORD to the Metro government for access to technology tools to enable Metro uh, to conduct a smart loading zone pilot program. Um, we have a letter um, from Councilman Mendez to approve. Uh, do I have a motion? Moved. Second. Second. 
Um, uh, okay. Um, it, are there any? Is there any discussion um, about this? This was deferred uh, last time at the request of Councilman O'Connell um, because he was wanting to uh, make sure that it was referred uh, rightly uh, to uh, the the. Um, uh, uh, traffic parking and transportation committee um and so uh it has been so referred and i think it was also discussed uh council mcconnell if i'm correct at the traffic and parking uh commission um so we have a motion and a second um and so if there's any uh discussion uh, please raise your hand and you'll be recognized okay uh councilman o'connell uh you are recognized Madam Chair, um, I guess I know, I think Ms. Eichard spoke to this last time that this is just the acceptance of the grant. Does the grant itself have terms that span the, the length of time of the pilot period? Do we know how long that pilot program is expected to last under the, the funding provided by this grant? Um, I appreciate that question. Uh, 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 if staff on the call, either Ms. Eichert or um, anyone in Public Works that is uh, familiar with this, if you would please uh, uh, click your raise hand button, um, if that is available to you to speak to this cord. Um, uh, Ms. Eichert, I, I, I see you um, on our list. Um, you are recognized if you're present. Ms. Costones has her hand raised on this one. Okay, I appreciate that. I think it looks like um, Ms. Eichert is on the phone. Um, and so I don't know staff, but we can make sure if um, uh, Mary Beth Eichert um, is, uh, um, can be on, on the call for sure. Um, or I'll also to see, I'm not sure if perhaps Mary Beth could not unmute herself um, uh, given that she's on the phone. Um, I am not being particularly successful in trying to unmute her myself. So. Um, staff, could we um, first try um, to unmute um, Mary Beth Eichard? Um, can staff do that? I'm, I am unable to um, unmute her. Okay. Um, <laughs> Um, with apologies to Ms. Eichard, um, staff, if you could please still work. I can see her here um, listed as participating, um, but I think she's participating by phone and maybe- If she can send us the last four digits of her phone number or something, then we can um, get ITS to transfer her over. Okay. Even though I can see her present on the list already, her, her last four digits are, um, nope, Mr. Hurd says we need her first six digits. <laughs> <laughs> My texts are like, first six digits, so last four password. digits. Um, okay, um, so last four digits, zero, zero, six, zero. Okay, um, Ms. Eicher, we will make sure you're recognized. I apologize for the technical difficulties. Uh, Mr. Cooper, uh, you said that Ms. Costonis, I see your hand raised. Ms. Costonis, you're recognized. You may unmute and speak, please. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I believe it is for a 90-day period. Um, there is a little bit of question about when the period would begin exactly. So there may be kind of a, a, a lead up period um, as, um, things are um, put into place in terms of the other changes that will be needed to really implement um, the aspects of the program. Um, so that will be discussed in more detail um, when the um, uh, ordinance that has also been filed to make some changes um, to the Metro code in relation to digital curve management um, comes to this committee for discussion. Thank you, Ms. Costones. I think then my follow-up question, Madam Chair, would be, uh, is it reasonable to accept the grant right now, right? Like we don't risk a cart horse conundrum here, do we? Thank you, 
if I may be recognized again, Madam Chair. Oh, yes, of course, um, Ms. Costones. Yeah, if, if there is any back and forth on questioning, please just consider yourself uh, still recognized. Thank you. Okay. Just Thank trying to deal you. with the Thank technical you. issue here. Um, uh, so the, the grant is just in-kind services. It's um, the ability to use the app. So if, you know, we wouldn't really be obligated in any other way. Um, so um, if, we, if we weren't able to implement the program, we just wouldn't be able to use the app. But um, it's, it's, it's granting us access to, to like license rights to use that technology. Right. Okay. And so, but the period of, of that access, you know, if, if for some reason these two processes become disconnected, we don't put that at risk somehow. No, I don't think so. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. That's all I've got. Okay. Um, thank you, Councilman O'Connell. Um, I think we have figured out which digits of um, Mary Beth Iker's telephone uh, number we need um, to uh, get her uh, participating in this call. Um, uh, and so um, I don't know um, if given that we are kind of tight on time um does anybody else on staff um have a question that they um want to pose okay um all righty well um colleagues um i, I do so appreciate miss eichard um being here on this call um for all this time um but not seeing um there being any other questions understanding it's a pilot um for in-kind services and i think us all being keenly aware um that we need to uh address our um kind of uh, loading zones and curbside um much more effectively um i think uh we have um uh, a, uh, a motion and a second. And so um, with apologies uh, to Ms. Eichert and thanks to her again for being here. Um, uh, would all those in favor please say aye. 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 Anyone uh, uh, against or abstaining? Um, if you are against or abstaining as we move through these votes, um, uh, you know, please just uh, raise your hand um, uh, and uh, I will uh, confirm um, that abstention or no vote. I know, Ms. Custonis, you're not no voting on this because you don't have a vote. Um, thank you uh, for being present and answering our question. Okay, we recommend approval um, on uh, 401. Okay, continuing to move through agenda, uh, RS 2020-441. Uh, Mendez, Toombs, and others approves the Green Invest Agreement between the Tennessee Valley Authority, National Electric Service, and the Metro government for the purchase of renewable energy. There is a letter from Councilman Mendez to approve. Um, this was uh, discussed in uh, Budget and Finance uh, Committee. Um, do I have a motion? So moved. Um, a second. second. Thank you. Okay, um, uh, colleagues, uh, any discussion? Um, are there any questions uh, for uh, staff um, about uh, this? Okay, seeing none, I think many of us were already present um, on the budget and finance call. So happily, colleagues, maybe that's gonna do double duty. Um, uh, anybody on uh, staff um, wishing to uh, share anything about uh, this legislation? Okay. Um, all righty. Um, with that, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone, uh, any uh, no votes or abstentions? Okay, seeing none, um, we move to the next item on the agenda. Okay. Um, resolution uh, 2020 
um, uh, Henderson, um, approves an intergovernmental agreement between the Metro government, the Department of Homeland Security, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, and the Federal Insurance and Mitigation Administration for approval of the Information Sharing Access Agreement. Um, this is administration legislation, colleagues. It is particular to um, stormwater buyouts. Um, uh, do I have a motion? So move. So move. Okay. Second. Second. Thank you. Um, is there anybody um, uh, with stormwater um, seeking to be recognized? Um, if uh, if so, uh, please uh, raise your hand um, or unmute. Um, Mr. Palco, I can hear that you've unmuted. Um, uh, do you want to speak to Bill 449, please? You're recognized. Mr. Palco, you're recognized. I see that you have re-muted. Can you hear me? Okay, yeah, so this is a, this is a agreement where FEMA has Mr. Palco, we, we cannot hear you very well, sir. I don't know if you need to kind of get up closer to your phone or, or move to a different uh, place, but um, we're unable to hear you and there's a fair amount of reverb. Okay, Mr. Palco, it sounds like you're... Paco, it sounds like you're going to have some technical difficulty. Um, I was sent an explanation of this legislation by staff, which I can pull up on email. Um, but I don't know, um, Mr. Honeysucker, if you are still present, um, we did have an email exchange today to explain this legislation. Um, yes, sir. Mr. Honeysucker, you are recognized to explain this bill, please. Thank you, Councilman. What this is is just an agreement between, uh, so that, so that FEMA can share information with. Uh, they've started charging for that, so now it's just allowing us to be able to purchase that information needed to support the home buyouts with uh, Mr. Palco's group. It's nothing real technical. It's just to be able to get the information they need to be able to find the right buyers. I'm sorry. Can you hear me now, Council Lady? Um, yes, sir. I can hear you now, and as well. Okay. Um, our agenda is, uh, it looks a little funny here, but we also do have um, an amendment, um, a late filed amendment. Um, and so if somebody could speak to that amendment as well. Um, so Mr. Palco, you're you're recognized. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so, so this agreement has to be in the language that FEMA requires. And there's some uh, provisions in there that this information, there's, there's technical information, some personal information associated with flood insurance claims. It has the date of the flood loss, the amount of flood loss, and there's some, um, we can only use that internally. We can't share that with anybody else. And we've been able to get this data for years. And we, we understand the, the uh, you know, the data sharing agreement. And this is just a late file to get some of the agreement language in exact order that FEMA needed it so that we can move forward with it. But, but that's basically what it is. It's information about flood insurance claims. We only use it internally. We can't share it with anybody. And we're following the, the guidelines that they, they require us to do. Again, it used to be they gave us this information every year, but now we have to enter into this agreement to get it shared to us. Okay, I appreciate that. Um, Mr. Cooper, would it be a proper motion, um, not seeing the, the late amendment, just kind of in how our agenda was organized here. Um, at this point, um, uh, do we need to move the amendment separately or can we just um, make a revised motion um, to a uh, uh, move the bill as amended. I would move the amendment first, get the vote on that, okay. and then move as amended. Okay, can I get a motion for the amendment, please, colleagues? So moved. Okay. Second. Second. Thank you. Um, Mr. Uh, Palco has just described the amendment for us. I apologize, it's a little bit out of order, but um, we've gotten that description, so let's go ahead and vote uh, for uh, or against that amendment. All in favor of the amendment? Aye. 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 Um, I am not seeing uh, any no's or abstentions, seeing none. Okay, now we have the uh, bill as amended. Any additional questions um, for Mr. Palco? 
Seeing none, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, um, any no votes or abstentions? Okay, seeing none, um, you recommend approval. Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Palco, for, for being here. We appreciate it. Thank um, you. Okay. Moving on, um, let's see, uh, resolution 202450, Druffle, Mendez, and others approves an intergovernmental agreement between the Tennessee Department of Transportation and the Metro Department of Public Works for the reimbursement of railroad crossing safety improvements um, at Post Road, uh, Railroad Crossing uh, 3480 to uh, 28F. Um, uh, let's see, uh, we have a letter from Councilman Mendez to approve, but we also have a letter um, from Councilman Druffle um, requesting a one meeting uh, deferral. Um, can I get a motion for a one meeting deferral, please? So move. Second. Um, I am just looking to see Mr. Druffle is here and wishes to be recognized. Mr. Druffle, I see you've already unmuted. Um, uh, I asked Ms. Uh, Cal to bring uh, this uh, intersection to your attention um, um, and to make sure you've seen all that backup information uh, for the design. Um, and I appreciate you wanting to look at it more closely. So you are recognized to speak on this deferral. Uh, thanks, Madam Chair. Yeah, it's just a, a deferral uh, for the next meeting so I get a better chance to look at the public works uh, and spend some time with them going over the intersection. It's a little bit more complex than, uh, than I anticipated, so I appreciate the time. Thanks so much. I appreciate that, Councilman Druffel. Um, so colleagues, you will see on our agenda, um, I very rarely uh, request a letter um, from a sponsor for things that are like, you know, fire hydrant abandonments and easements and some of those things. Um, but uh, these, uh, uh, this program of um, improving the safety of these railroad crossings, this is something we see a fair amount of and something that I have mentioned in previous uh, committees um, that I am continuing not to see reflected in these designs. So um, public work staff, I am mentioning this to you again. Um, I appreciate that Councilman Druffle wants to look at this a little more closely. This is a very um, dangerous, uh, kind of notoriously so uh, uh, crossing. Um, but what I also hear from folks that I know that live in Councilman Druffle's district is um, they are immediately adjacent to a commercial district and people that live in the adjacent neighborhood, they want to walk and cross this crossing and cross at the um, uh, intersection and get to adjacent shops and restaurants and all those things. And so what I have been asking uh, staff for years is can we please make sure that when we engage TDOT on this, there's extensive signage and redesign and curbing and whatever. So I asked for all the backup documents on this, but there is no provision for pedestrians. So. You know, we're going to make all this effort with which we are so grateful to TDOT for working with us and really providing all the funding for these. Um, but um, I continue to see that um, as a challenge. So I just say that here um, as public works chair. I appreciate Councilman Druffle deferring it. Um, but I do just want to make staff aware. Um, I, I would like us to be more proactive, please, um, in making sure that there are pedestrian accommodations um, with these uh, crossing safety improvements. Um, and if there can or can't be or whatever it is, then I would like staff to get back uh, to obviously Councilman Druffle specific to this one, um, but to the Public Works Committee uh, on that because we are seeing a fair number of these come through committee. Okay, with that, um, any other comments, discussion, questions on the deferral? Okay, right, seeing none, um, all in favor of a one meeting deferral, say aye. Aye. Okay. Um, all right, you recommend deferral. Um, uh, resolution 2020451, Evans, Hager, and others approve supplement one to an intergovernmental agreement between the Tennessee Department of Transportation and the Metro Department of Public Works for the reimbursement of railroad crossing safety improvements at Andrew Jackson Parkway Railroad Crossing 348692G. Um, uh, do I have a motion? So moved. Okay. Second. Um, second. Okay, great. Um, Council Lady Evans, you are uh, recognized. 
Yes, so uh, in speaking with Public Works and reviewing all the information, basically we had approved this previously, um, but by the time um, they went out, we all went out to um, start to actually do the work, uh, the pricing had changed on lumber and some of the other necessary materials. And so we found that uh, we need to come back and, and, and change um, the um, amount of our contribution. And so that's why this is coming back. Okay, I appreciate that. Um, Councilor Evans, do you know this to be a place where people, I know that's not true of every railroad crossing, but do you have um, people living in adjacent communities that need to cross here to get to uh, areas? Uh, you know, I'd have to double check, but my recollection of this area is this is not a place that would be a good uh, crossing area. Um, so I don't think it's the same kind of situation that Councilman Dreffel is facing. I appreciate that. Okay, so we have a motion uh, for approval. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, you recommend approval. Um, okay, uh, RS 2020-455, Syracuse, Van Reese, and others request the Director of Public Works and the Department of Law to declare Red River Service Corporation and Red River Waste Solutions LP to be in breach of contract to rebid Red River's contracts for waste collection and to include stronger enforcement and penalty provisions as part of the request for proposals and uh, resulting contracts. Um, okay, do I have a motion? So moved. Okay. So okay. Um, colleagues, uh, if uh, you could raise your hand, please, if you are on the Public Works Committee and you are also present in the Budget and Finance Committee to hear that discussion there. Um, anybody raise their hand to that effect? Okay, so Council Lady Allen, you and I were present during that discussion. Council Lady Benedict, you were present. Council Lady Evans, you were present. Um, Councilman O'Connell, you were present as well during that discussion, budget finance, I believe. Um, Councilman Syracuse, uh, Council Lady Gamble. Um, so it's looking to me, um, Mr. Roden, um, uh, that for the most part, um, we uh, heard kind of the debate and discussion there. Um, I will uh, share with you all that that did uh, pass in that um, committee, I believe unanimously in the end. Um, what I wanted to do here though, um, in budget and finance committee, they did talk a lot about kind of the logistics of routing and so forth, you know, items that I thought were pretty much particular to uh, public works rather than the financial implications of this. So in kind of an awkward backwards -y sort of way, um, less of the financial implications were discussed um, in budget and finance and more of the logistical. Um, and so just to kind of um, uh, make sure that we all kind of have the same uh, context here. Um, I have already let um, uh, Public Works staff, um, Red River, and um, Councilman Syracuse, you'll be recognized first, but basically just giving everybody two minutes um, for the most salient points. Um, what I would say to Public Works staff, um, you know, you listened in on the first call, same to Red River, you heard what was discussed there. Um, so as this is before us for discussion in Public Works, I would just ask uh, sponsor Syracuse, uh, Public Works staff, and Red River in that order, um, if you would just give your kind of two minute elevator speech um, uh, to uh, share what you think is most pertinent um, to the understanding and discussion of this resolution. Uh, Councilman Syracuse, you are recognized. Thank you so much, Madam Chair. I will be brief and just frame this then uh, if, as questions come up, we, we, we can dive into logistics for sure. So this has been an issue that has been going on for about three and a half, four years in, in my district. Um, I'm thankful for the eight co-sponsors um, of, of this resolution that recognizes that this has been uh, an issue that has impacted multiple districts throughout the urban services district. And my understanding is I unfortunately have the designation of being the most negatively impacted here. So I've been uh, very involved over the past three and a half, four years, more so than I really should be about the uh, understanding of the logistics, the operations and whatnot of, of Red River and how public works and the legal department have really worked very hard to try to work with them to improve their situation. They, they have multiple uh, challenges that, that, that they're going through. I, I, I don't file this resolution lightly. Um, I have been patient. I have waited uh, three and a half, four years as I've watched and supported public works and legal as I do now as they've worked hard to, to try to resolve this, but it has gotten to a point where 
our constituents are, are demanding that this be resolved and I am right there with them. So this tersely worded resolution is being filed. I do not have the expectations or the ask that immediately when we hopefully pass this, that public works or legal is going to uh, immediately cancel the contract. I'm not asking for that. There are, there are it, it's much more complicated than that, but it was time that we add our voice to this conversation and elevate the conversation that um, it is time to resolve this e immediately. But as you read in the, in the resolution, there is a chronology of how this has gone on for a, a while, that there's been default of contract um, found with, with Red River. Um, and so I am hopeful and supportive of public works and legal to, to, to continue to try to resolve this and take whatever steps are necessary. Thank you so much, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you, Councilman Syracuse. Um, uh, public Works staff, um, uh, Ms. Allen, if, if you would lower your hand for now, just so I can see who on staff, um, uh, Public Works staff intends to uh, speak to um, this. Um, Ms. Wallstrom, um, you are recognized and I am uh, clicking the two minute button, please. Um, or, go ahead. Thank you, Chairman Henderson. Um, Red River has been a public works contractor for the last 16 years. And in that time, they have provided consistent service until as council member Syracuse said about three and a half to four years ago. Um, during that time, public works has issued several default letters um, requiring them to improve their performance. And we have also taken money from payments based on the contract service clause. Red River is currently in a default status with Public Works, and we acknowledge the current performance issues with the council members. Public Works, in conjunction with the Metro Legal Department, has carefully considered many options to correct the problem, and we have been negotiating with Red River to try and find a solution that presents the least challenge and disruption to our citizens, as well as to Metro and Red River. Public Works received two letters from Red River just this afternoon, which are part of this ongoing negotiation. So as such, we would tell you that we will be limited in what we can talk about tonight as we are still under negotiation with them. And council members can contact us on an individual basis if they wish to discuss issues further. Um, we also wanted to let you know that Public Works' priority is to reach a resolution that provides the customer service that we know our citizens deserve. Okay, I appreciate that, Ms. Wallstrom. Um, and so uh, next, Ms. Wallstrom, if you will remute your mic, um, and then I am looking uh, for our guests um, from uh, Red River. If you are on a WebEx platform uh, by which you can uh, raise your hand to be acknowledged, um, please uh, do so. Um, but uh, let's see. I am not, um, oh, here we go. Uh, Mr. Smith, um, you are uh, with Red River, you are recognized um, and uh, you may unmute your mic and begin uh, your two minute time. Okay, and again, thank you, uh, uh, Chairwoman Henderson and, and others here to you and Ms. Wallstrom as well for, for all that you all are doing to, to help resolve some of these issues. As Mr. Syracuse had said, and I won't, belabor some of the things that we went over in the other committee meeting. Um, we do have an opportunity here, I think, to um, accept some challenges that we've had over several years as the community has grown, uh, the population growth, the logistical um, problems that we've had with, with traffic and other things that we go on day to day as our community is growing. Even pre-COVID, we've had a tremendous amount of strain placed on each day. We do have a four-day system that we've uh, been in talks with uh, MPW about changing to a five day that would take particularly that, that, that challenging Friday that Mr. Syracuse had pointed out earlier from 21,000 bins down to um, 21,000 bins and, and load balance those and put those in a you know, contiguous service areas where we have, you know, more rebound capability. We have more quality assurance, quality control folks. As we increase our population, increase that. Now we've got COVID too. We've had increased tonnage each day. We all know that we're staying home. 
that stay home order issued on 23rd of March has caused us to, to uh, create more tenants at home. So uh, over the last couple of months, even in April, it was 36 tons a day, up to 73 tons a day extra uh, in May. And we're trending right now about 41 tons a day extra that we are generating at our homes each day. So that creates a challenge for us uh, as a community to, to, to timely get those trucks to the transfer station and then back on route and then back to the transfer station at the transfer station at the end of the day. And then trying to get all that packed into four days has just been challenging for us. So uh, I, again, I'm very thankful and appreciative of Metro Public Works and the things that they're doing to help us modernize and to uh, improve, improve logistics and uh, reduce the impact on our communities. Okay, thank you. That was exactly two minutes, uh, Mr. Smith. Well done. Um, okay, uh, colleagues, um, do you have any uh, questions, uh, whether for Councilman Syracuse, uh, Ms. Wallstrom, or uh, representatives of uh, Red River? Um, uh, Council Lady uh, Van Reese, uh, you are recognized. You can unmute your mic. Thank you very much. Um, as not a member of the committee, uh, I wanted just to jump in and make sure that uh, with the volume of mail we're getting, uh, that you make sure and review uh, the report uh, provided from the hub. As a founding member of the hub committee, uh, I asked um, for a complete report in regard to this trash and um, other complaints. And so you can see that it's itemized by council districts so that you can see that this problem is countywide and uh, in particular uh, in my district. And so that's why I signed on as a co-sponsor. I wanna thank Mr. Syracuse um, for putting pen to paper in regard to getting this um, uh, in, uh, in a position where we can talk about it. And uh, I support public works and it's ongoing uh, creative negotiations. Uh, but particularly for this committee, I wanted to make sure you paid attention to the report that was provided uh, so that you can see the data that uh, confirms this as a countywide issue. Council Aben Reese, um, do you know uh, what date that was sent by whom, uh, if, if members wanted to look in their inbox to find that place? It was forwarded by Hannah over the weekend. Okay, so Hannah Zeitlin on Saturday or Sunday. Um, and if I could ask Hannah or staff, um, uh, colleagues, if you'll remember, we've established a public works uh, OneDrive, um, kind of a SharePoint folder. Um, internal to that, um, we do have a solid waste and recycling subcommittee folder. Um, and so uh, materials that have been sent by uh, uh, Red River, um, and now the report that Council Lady Van Rees requested, um, we will put all those in that folder um, just for your for reference um, and you know encourage you to look at those uh, before uh, tomorrow's meeting as well. Um, Councilman Nash, you're recognized. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, Ms. Wallstrom, uh, the uh, transfer station apparently has kind of restrictive hours given our, our new dynamics as far as traffic and extra loads and whatnot. Who, uh, what's our contract with them? And, and uh, is it an issue to try and get them to expand their hours? Ms. Wallstrom, you're recognized. Ms. Wallstrom, you're recognized. Okay, I'm going to let Philip Jones, uh, who handles the operations for the solid waste, speak about this. Yeah, okay. We do have a contract with them that we we can't expand their hours or we can't ask. But the remembrance here is that uh, their service is really a Tuesday through Friday um, service from 7 to 5 p.m. So if they need extension, it's a matter of asking. Um, so, Mr. Jones and Councilman Nash, if, if I may just to expand on that or to amplify your question, then I'll recognize you again. Um, Mr. Jones, explain to me, help me understand how this transfer station works. Obviously, uh, Red River isn't going all the way to the dump in Murfreesboro. Um, if we are separately contracted, um, so we're contracted with the transfer station, not Red River, and the hours of the transfer station with whom we're contracted is constraining the deliveries of Red River, are we looking um, 
at that, Mr. Jones, uh, at all? Yeah, we have looked at it, but I mean, you just got to remember, Saturday's not a pickup day. So, you know, they get that morning if they, if they had some issues and they had some missing. But when you're talking about missing complete route, they couldn't, they would have to provide that service all day long on Saturday. And while they're willing to work with us, I think that's a little extreme when you say every Saturday for multiple years to say you need that service provided when we're a Tuesday through Friday service. That's probably the, the biggest part of the issue. Okay, but what about if it were open on Monday, say, and then Friday wouldn't be as much of a problem? Can you speak to that? Can the transfer station be open on Monday? They are open on Monday, correct. Oh, so they're already open on Monday today. So then how is it a problem? Couldn't we just renegotiate with them to be open on Monday? They are open on Monday. Yes, ma'am. The transfer okay. station is open on Monday. Okay. And has not, uh, uh, I, I will, um, okay. Um, so that's good to know. Pertinent fact, um, Mr. Nash, I apologize. I kind of hijacked your question. Um, you are recognized again, Mr. Nash. Thank you again, Madam Chairman. The, uh, the other issue, it seems like, uh, Mr. Smith, you, you could use a few more trucks at the moment. Uh, is it not possible to subcontract with uh, uh, another company or um, lease some trucks to help uh, with the COVID uh, extras? I can understand we would want to invest a lot of money uh, for something that hopefully is going to be over in a few months. Um, okay, Mr. Smith, you are recognized. Uh, Ms. Van Reese, if you would put your hand down, please. Um, okay, uh, Mr. Smith, you're recognized. To respond okay, to Councilman Nash's so, question. Yeah, the answer the, in, in a broad sense is yes, that we have invested in some more equipment, more trucks. Um, there, there is an economic restraint. Obviously, we, we bid a, a, a price, and that's what you know the price is. We've increased... Um, cost by quite a bit with no increase in, in, in compensation. So um, before COVID, we, we spent about $300,000 extra per year in driver retention. We had a national driver shortage that uh, impacted that. So we had to increase our equipment for them to come work for us. We had to have a, um, a sign-on bonus, retention bonus, and those kinds of things, and in, increased cost in, in outside services. So yeah, that, that's a constraint. Uh, the time uh, that we are on a, on a route is a constraint. Obviously, if we have um, traffic congestion or other things that impact that time per stop, that, that's, a, that's extra cost, right? And then down to the wait, so if they're making an extra trip to the transfer station, again, that's an extra cost to us that we're not recovering uh, increased cost and in our, our increased compensation for our services. So that extra day, that's kind of what we're trying to say with that Monday. The transfer stations open them all on Monday, but we don't collect any more routes on Monday. So. That that's kind of what what that what that goes into the whole time per stop per day per route thing. So uh, to to say just throw more trucks on four days and more drivers that, that, that is an answer. But obviously there's a, there's an economic impact to that too. So we're trying to we'll stay within those constraints and um, do the best we can with those. I, I share Councilman Syracuse's frustration over this and. Uh, just want to encourage uh, Grand River and Public Works to get their heads together and work this out because you're not getting the job done right now. You're all grown ups. Let's get her done. Thank you, uh, Councilman Nash. Um, uh, uh, Mr. Hall, Joe Hall, um, representing uh, Red River, I saw that your hand was raised uh, just shortly before. Did you want to respond to a, a previous question, particular to the routing or transfer stations? You're recognized. Yeah, a, a multiple of those. Thank you, uh, Chair Henderson. I, I th Mr. Jones is 100% correct. Saturday is not a collection day. But when Friday blows up because of uh, a severe traffic congested uh, amid Friday being a, a very packed day, when COVID-19 adds 73 tons a day in May and 40, oh, 41 tons a day in the last couple of weeks, those are, those are hugely disruptive conditions. And um, I, I will say that, that Red River do, does hit the ground super early the next morning to go back and pick up routes that they've missed. 
Uh, they've not said, hey, that's not in our contract. Uh, they've said, let's dig in, let's go get this done and, 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 and pick the garbage up. The, the constraints on the, the transfer station are, are extreme uh, amid a global pandemic when all you, I would encourage every council member to Google COVID-19 residential waste volume and see what's going on all over the country. We sent everyone home and we said, stay there and quarantine in place. And commercial waste is way down and residential waste is way high. That may not change for a long time. Councilman Nash, I'm, we're with you. We hope that it will change, but there are no certainties. I mean, our, our case count in Nashville is high. What do we do if we go back to, to phase one? Um, we are, we're advocating um, what we think is a, a strong solution here to go from four to five days a week to, to, to take some of the burden off of Council, Councilman Syracuse's Friday and spread it over to what is a natural work day, a Monday. Um, we're the 25th largest city in America. I mean, at some point we stop being a four day a week collection city. Anyway, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, let's see, uh, colleagues, um, Councilor Styles, I see you, but I'm wanting to see if I've got another committee member um, with uh, respectfully that I'm gonna acknowledge um, uh, 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 first. Um, uh, Council Lady, uh, Hurt, did I see your hand raised? That's like you heard, you're recognized. Thank you, Madam Chair. So um, looking over the uh, materials, uh, uh, memorandums that have been sent, uh, routing, has the routing changed in, in the times that, um, that you've been uh, handling the uh, trash services? Has it changed over the years now that we've got extra growth? Um, uh, regarding routing, uh, is it Mr. Hall or Mr. Smith that wants to be recognized? Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith, you're recognized to answer Council Lady Hurt's question. Thank you. Um, and, and Mr. Jones from um, the Metro Public Works has been just wonderful to work with over the years. Um, so uh, has been, we've been trying to uh, uh, navigate these waters for a long time, but the, the routes had, have not significantly been rerouted since uh, we've been on the ground there. We have a tremendous amount of disjointed days where we'll have uh, trucks that are very far apart. So what we're trying to do is consolidate consolidate those days. So if you look around the map, it looks like a clock. So you have contiguous service areas and you have all of your uh, resources in one area at one time. All of the uh, quality control and the supervisors are all in one area. So we're trying to modernize the, and you, we've used, um, our chief information officer has used a, a technology. She was a software developer and just a tremendous uh, uh, computer head and has come up with some really good solutions about how we modernize and use that technology to, to make those more efficient and minimize our uh, impact on our communities. So we're not running over top of each other or running over the same street multiple times, but trying to do that more methodically and smarter using that technology. Okay, Mr. Smith, I appreciate that. Just a clarifying question to kind of follow on with Council Lady Hurt. Have you made a proposal about um, five day, Monday rerouting? Is, is, that, um, is, is that something that you have already proposed to, to Public Works? Um, we have provided that information to Public Works, yes, and we're still talking about, uh, about that, yes. Okay, um, I appreciate that. Councilor, heard any follow-up from you? Yes, um, so it's obvious that you have a, a, a problem and I don't understand why you wouldn't go to a seven day uh, work week if necessary and in, in order to get on top of this, if you're talking about three years of having this problem, so I'm just wondering if there are obstacles that the city is, is, uh, has created that you are unable to change what it is that you're doing in order to meet the necessary um, uh, loads that you've been uh, confronted with. So Mr. Smith, you're recognized to respond to that. Thank you. Um, the, the, and I don't want to speak for Metro Public Works. There's a lot of other 
um, things that they considered. Obviously, there's recycling involved. There's other impacts that they have in the community. And so we have to be mindful and frankly have to ask their permission to, to change these routes. And so I think us working together to, to come up with this solution together um, is the answer. So I, I think that we're well on our way to, to coming to that agreement. So to answer your question, okay. yeah, they have to tell us, yes, that we can do that on, that, on those days. We can't choose our own days. Okay, but you, just to clarify, you have made a proposal for five days of delivery that include Monday with the rerouting kind of per the clock that you uh, discussed. That has been submitted to Public Works for their consideration. Yes, ma'am. Okay, all righty. Um, with that, um, uh, Council Lady, uh, let's see who was next. Council Lady Stiles, you're recognized. Oh, I apologize, Council Lady Stiles. I'm sorry, let me get my committee members. Uh, Council Lady Benedict, you are recognized. Thank you, Chair. Um, so I've got just a couple of questions. It's, it sounds like we're making good progress, and I certainly am in support of the resolution going back to, to what it says. I appreciate, though, that in this committee, which is um, the, the one that touches this more than any any other committee, um, that, that we're seeing and getting a lot more color on it. I guess um, considering how long this is, let me back up, 2020 and COVID-19 crisis has been incredibly difficult for every American, every Tennessean and every Nashvilleian. Um, there's no doubt that Red River and also our public works team um, are, are having the same challenges that the general public are having. Um, and and But I think that we have now, so anyway, I don't wanna dismiss the problems that have um, been occurring in the past four months, but I also wanna, because I think this goes back into the documents that we received from Mr. Hall today, um, in addition to the um, data that uh, Councilwoman Van Rees shared with, with us um, uh, through the council office, we see that, that this has been ongoing for some time. So I appreciate that we are now, um, that, that uh, council member Syracuse brought this resolution forward because it certainly is getting a lot more attention than, than perhaps what it was before. I guess what I'd like to understand is what obstacles stand in the way of getting this fixed by next week, let's just pretend. So certainly not by next week, but you know, what are the obstacles that 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 are in the way so that we can get responsible, reliable collection um, for Nashvilleians since they're paying for it, especially now? Um, Council City Benedict, if I may, is your question perhaps directed to public works um, as to uh, kind of obstacles, like, you know, what's what's kind of holding this up? Um, Thank you, uh, it, It's actually for both. Public works, I'd like to hear from first, but Red River okay. would be good too. Okay, so um, uh, Public Works, um, you are recognized on Council Lady uh, Benedict's question as to kind of maybe primary obstacles um, uh, uh, in getting this across the finish line to Councilman Nash's point. Um, uh, so Ms. Wallstrom or Mr. Jones, um, uh, Ms. Wallstrom, do you, do you want to be recognized to respond to that question? Yes, please. Go ahead. There are several things that Public Works is responsible for that tie in with the trash. Um, we have our recycling days are on the same day as our trash days. This makes it easier for the citizens to remember which day their recycling day is. That would have to be rerouted. The five days would cause a reroute of our entire system. Um, right now, our guys are only working four days, so they would have to be moving and we would have to work with them to work that out. They may have childcare issues, they may have second jobs that they've taken on, um, there would be issues there. We also have computer systems and software programs that are programmed with these routes in them. They would have to be completely redone and they would have to be tied into the hub again. We would also need time to send out communication to the residents to let them know these routes have changed, what their new day is going to be. And then as part of this, there's also a request or a suggestion that we change the way that we are picking up after a holiday. So all of that information would have to be communicated and sent out also. And there is a cost to all of that. And Ms. Wallstrom, for, I mean, I know you have in progress negotiations, but I would imagine when this council considered expanding recycling um, to uh, not once a month, um, uh, but twice a month, I can't remember where we're headed. We're not, we're not doing that now. 
Um, so I, um, I assume that you had looked at the cost implications there. So, you know, if you were to move recycling um, to a five day, um, is, is that something that you're prepared to share with us the cost here or does that have implications on your negotiations? <laughs> I'm not prepared to share the cost with that tonight. We did put in budget information to go to every other week recycling. I would have to go back and look and update those costs based on the new pay plan and several other items. But we were not, uh, that was not one of the requests or the improvements that was granted by the administration because of the, the, the very stringent budget that we had this year. So that, that would not be an option for us right now. Okay, I guess the one question I do have, Ms. Wallstrom, if I may. So, you know, this council was discussing moving to, um, are we gonna move to twice a month recycling or weekly? I apologize, I just can't recall at this point, but um, we were gonna move- Every other week. Okay, we we're gonna move to every other week recycling. And so, you know, we looked at the implications of that. Um, this council um, in another financial time um, uh, had uh, decided to move forward with that. Uh, you know, the trucks, et cetera. Um, and so, you know, there was gonna have to be communication about that. Um, and so I just wonder, did you ever look at that um, when you were considering all the logistics and cost and communication of that? Were you ever at, at any time in tandem considering, uh, you know, what Councilman Syracuse said is now a kind of three year standing problem um, was rerouting and adding the Monday, like that would have seemed to be a natural time to uh, converge those conversations. So um, can you kind of speak to that? Because I would think um, we'd have some clarity on kind of the communications costs and, and some of that um, from the earlier considerations. Chair Henderson, I'm gonna let Sharon Smith respond to that. So looking at um, when we were thinking about or, or thought we were gonna be able to go to every other week, that was the time when our operations folks were keenly looking at a five-day route. It would work really well. And when it comes to the communication costs, the um, council may remember that we received uh, grant money from the recycling partnership to offset the cost to educate residents on the change uh, from uh, once a month to every other week, it would have been easy to fold in uh, the trash information into that. Uh, unfortunately, when the implementation was delayed, we lost that grant money. So we actually now have um, uh, lost that opportunity. Okay, um, I appreciate that clarification. Okay, colleagues, um, uh, so I, I think we discussed this a fair amount. I know, um, I see uh, Council Lady Stiles and uh, Councilman Bradford, we are coming up on an hour. Um, I'm gonna recognize each of you. Um, if you have a specific question, uh, please be uh, specific. Um, if you just want to make a, a statement um, regarding Red River and uh, their, their service or problems, um, I would encourage you to uh, do that um, at tomorrow's uh, council meeting. Council Lady Stiles, you're recognized. Thank you so very much, Chair, for recognizing me. I know that I am not on the committee. I, I did want to commend Council Member Syracuse for putting this resolution together. I am very happy to be a part of it. To Mr. Smith, I recognize that COVID, of course, has thrown many of our systems out of whack. I know I personally have been having a, a fairly regular conversation with your company and missing our streets, covering only half of a street many times. And so while we talk about COVID and this problem has clearly been going on for quite some time, what is the issue that you have found about the retention of your workers? I've been told that some people, you just haven't been able to hold on to them or some people just decided to do their own thing when they're out doing their routes. How is that being addressed? So um, thank you, ma'am. Before, even before COVID, we, we recognize that there's um, there's a national driver shortage. That's that's real, and that that hits uh, Metro as well. Uh, Public Works, we all know that is. So we did have to um, change our pay structure and offer different incentives and tonnage bonuses and that thing. And we, we did uh, increase our payroll costs over three hundred thousand dollars for one year, which is very significant. Um, and then leading up into the the the, the extra. Um, that we've we've taken on. So 
part of the reason why we're doing this, this day route is to take away the load that we have on each of our uh, ladies and gentlemen that are out there driving those trucks. When they're out there in their average uh, days, um, the heavy days, you know, they're over 30,000 uh, collections, which that was 31,000 uh, bench, you know, 27,000 customers. So instead of doing that in one day, you, you move that to about 22,000. So that spreads that workload down and that gets them home. You know, the last thing that they want to be on Friday afternoon is out there late. We don't want anybody um, being uh, out there. It's not safe. We want them home. So that's part of it too. And then, and then five days of pay versus four days of pay. Um, so we've spread that out and um, we think that's going to be better for our employees to recruit and retain offer them five days of pay and then the lighter load each day. Councilor Styles, do you have a follow-up question? I do. That speaks to drawing more workers in, and, and I understand the financial aspect of retention, but how are you holding these workers accountable when they fail to do the routes that they've been given outside of financial? It seems to me there doesn't seem to be enough of a penalty taking place when people do half of a route and then we have to call and find out, are you going to come on Saturday? Are we going to have to wait until Monday? What is the accountability factor for those individuals that you find not doing their job? Right. Well, and part of, that's part of the issue that we're having, having disjointed um, where our supervisors are in different parts of the city and all of our, all of our folks are in one area um, and, and that error correction in the, um, the routing system that we're using, if we modernize that, we're, their the accountability is there to where we can catch those errors sooner. And then I think moving from, from a punishment to a reward, it, it means more in our industry. And hey, we'll show you how to do this job and, and we'll, we'll hold you accountable. But I think to, to, on a punishment scale, that, that really doesn't help when you're when they're overloaded, right? When when they're out there all day long and they've made a mistake, they have to go back and get their own message, which is that, that's what happened. So I, I think training and helping them more than punishing them is, is, a, is a better way to manage the, the, the crisis that we have right now. Okay. Um, uh, Councilor Styles, uh, anything else? No, Madam Chair, I've taken enough time. I'll, I'll hold until tomorrow. Thank you so okay. very much. I appreciate it. Um, Councilman Bradford, you're recognized. Thank you, Madam Chair. So my question is, how much on a yearly basis uh, do we pay Red River to provide this service for us? Uh, Ms. Ms. Wallstrom, uh, do you want to unmute to respond to Councilman Bradford's question? Sorry, I was having trouble unmuting. Um, we pay them a right around $7 million a year to provide this service. Okay, so we're paying about $7 million a year and we are continually seeing less than stellar services from this client. Now, I'm just gonna put it out there. If I'm paying somebody $7 million a year, especially it's with taxpayer money i want to make sure that we are getting a, a very high quality service and i'm sorry but if red river cannot provide that then i really think public works and legal should look into other providers that can guarantee that we will get our our taxpayers money to work this. and that's all i'm going to say about this Okay, thank you, Councilman Bradford. Uh, Council Lady Porterfield, you're recognized. Uh, thank you, Chair. I'm sorry, I still I still have my hand up. Uh, my, my question actually was uh, just uh, was previously answered, but I do want to note that as of uh, Monday, 8 o'clock p.m., I'm still getting messages that people have not had their trash picked up from last Friday. So I'm not sure if this is a, a capacity issue for Red River, if they just no longer have the capacity. Um, I, I don't know what the solution is, and I won't claim to know what the solution is, but it's unacceptable that we're still waiting for trash to be picked up that's been left out 
out since Thursday night in the heat in the dead of the summer. So I would please ask that between uh, Metro Legal, Red River, and Public Works that a solution is um, is found very quickly. And I empathize with uh, the impact that coronavirus has had on this. However, as Councilman Syracuse said, this has been a three or four year problem and it's unacceptable. So thank you, Chair. Thank you, Council Lady Porterfield. Um, Council Lady Allen, who is the chair of our subcommittee on solid waste and uh, recycling. Uh, we heard a lot of, tra lot of trash talk in here, so you, you are recognized, Council Lady Allen. Thank, thank you, Chair. Just a, a question about that that seven million. Is that is that based on a per ton volume? I mean, as as the volume to be picked up goes up. Do we pay more or or is this kind of the same situation we got into with the recycling that we had a flat fee and and uh, other things have expanded and, and now we have um, no flexibility to adjust to that. And if that is the case, is what's being discussed making any, creating any more flexibility so that um, that, that the provider can make the adjustments that are necessary without providing Metro with a total unknown of what we're paying. The, the way the contract is paid is that we pay a price per cart. So whenever the numbers go up in carts, then we are paying them an additional amount. So when Nashville grows and new homes come in, they are issued a part. And as a result, Red River would get paid more money for those parts. They also have a um, clause in their contract where every year we go back and we look and give them a CPI increase based on certain parameters. And so they receive those annually and they are capped at 3%. And Ms. Wallstrom, uh, for the viewing public, acronyms, CPI is Consumer Price Index? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, okay. Council Lady Allen, do you have a follow-up? Thank you. No, so they've got built into their contract a way, a way to it. I mean, they've got more money coming in if more is happening and should be able to adjust to that. that that's helpful to know. And then just a statement that as we, as we solve this problem, I hope it will be with not only the long-term goal of, of more effective recycling, but of, of being consistent with the zero waste, solid waste master plan. Thank you. I, I appreciate that um, uh, point, Council Lady, uh, well made. Um, I wanted to, uh, Council Lady Benedict, I know you asked a question earlier that you wanted to be directed to both Public Works and Red River, and then I kind of asked a follow-on question and we did not get back around to Red River. Um, Mr. Hall, um, uh, representing Red River, I think wanted to, to circle back. Um, Mr. Hall, can I, recognized. Can I cl clarify that, Chair, now? Yes, yeah, yes, Ms. Bennett, go ahead. You clarify and, and then Mr. Hall, uh, you can respond. Perfect, thank you. So I just would wanna hear from Red River, from Mr. Hall. Um, so we we heard the obstacles that Public Works has. I'd like to talk about any or hear about any unique obstacles. I don't wanna reiterate what Public Works shared with us. I wanna understand the unique obstacles that uh, the, the vendor has here, please. I appreciate that, thank you. Uh, Mr. Hall, you're recognized. Yeah, I, and I'll, I'll, I'll identify a few quick ones and then I'll pass it to Steve Smith. I would say the national driver shortage, as Steve says, is real. Uh, Steve Bland from MTA will tell you that they recruit drivers from as far away from Chicago. As he likes to say, everybody in Nashville who wants to drive a bus is driving a bus. And you get drivers poached from you, they lose their own jobs through their own behavior, lots of other things. It is a tough, tough business. That's one. Number two is most fundamentally and systemically, I would say I, I have to continue to highlight the remarkable change, the population density, physical changes, living, living um, planning change of this community over the 15 years since this thing was really comprehensively um, rerouted. It, it, we, prior to COVID-19, it's what all of us talked about was the stresses of of, uh, uh, of growth is having our community. I think it logically follows that waste collection ought to be considered a factor to, uh, to modernize amid that. I'd, I'd say those are the big ones. Um, something was mentioned earlier about the hub Nashville thing, and I, I would encourage you not to just use that as a thumb. And, um, you know, if you look at the, the file that I'm looking at from 717, there are 150 reports on the hub Nashville. I guess this is hub and calls. 
there are 31,000 carts, 27,200. That's one half of 1%. Now the misses are actually worse than that. And Jeff Syracuse will tell you because at the people at the end of his day, because there's too much stuff, uh, there's too much uh, routing packed into one day or getting left off. Uh, I, I, I want to emphasize that the vast majority of people um, get their trash picked up when it's supposed to be and don't have a problem. This is a, this is certainly around the edges, uh, around the edges, and it's due to growth. It doesn't mean it doesn't need to get fixed. Red Rivers is frustrated about this, as as you guys, I promise. Okay, I appreciate that. Um, colleagues, just to, to wrap this up, every committee member um, and, and more has been uh, recognized, uh, received follow-up questions. Uh, Councilman Syracuse, as, as we come back to the vote, um, if, if you would like to be recognized again, I'm happy to recognize you as the sponsor of the bill. Councilman Syracuse, you wish to be recognized? Thank you so much. I really just wanted to end on a respectful note in that it, within the last three, four years, uh, I've had the uh, opportunity to get to know the folks at Red River from the CEO down. I just want to say, yep, they are a good company. Yeah, they are good people. I do believe they've made some, some blunders in decision-making, operational logistics, but at the end of the day, what we're asking for is public works and legal. Please use whatever means necessary to make whatever operational, logistical, and contractual changes um, and Red River, uh, please uh, do that as well so that we get this resolved. I, I appreciate it. Okay. Thank you, Councilman Syracuse. And uh, thank you, colleagues. Uh, thank you, Red River, uh, for being here. Uh, thank you, staff, um, for staying on the call for so long. I think we uh, sussed out um, uh, a, a lot of new pieces of this, um, things that did not come up in budget and finance. Um, and I appreciate everybody asking very uh, uh, specific questions and um, uh, we, I think I understand this space better more too, and um, I hope uh, uh, you all do as well. Um, as Ms. Wallstrom uh, and I think Ms. Smith offered uh, earlier, um, if there are additional follow-up questions that you all have beyond this resolution, just to understand this space better, um, please don't hesitate to uh, ask staff. And so uh, with that, um, we have a, a motion and a second for resolution 2024-55, Councilman Syracuse, um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, any no's or abstentions? Okay. Seeing none. Um, all right, colleagues, we are about to move into um, bills on second reading for discussion. But before we do so, um, Councilman O'Connell, you had the first, before we get too far down the agenda, you had the first bill um, on our agenda. Um, back up at the top um, regarding the sign on Broadway. Um, um, so let's get back to that um, before we move on to second reading bills. RS 2023-85, O'Connell, Murphy and Henderson authorizes Nashville Underground LLC to construct and install an aerial encroachment A sign 105 Broadway. Do I have a motion? Thank you, Madam Chair, I'm ready to move approval. Okay, thank you. Um, Sorry. Uh, second. Thank you, all in favor? Or apologize, any, push, any questions or discussion? <laughs> okay. Um, uh, okay, all in favor, any, um, any uh, uh, no votes or abstentions? Okay, not seeing any, um, uh, you recommend approval. Okay, so now let's go back. Uh, thanks for your patience on that, Councilman O'Connell. Um, now we are going to move um, into... Okay, bills on second reading for uh, discussion. Um, BL 2022-35, Mendez, Henderson, and others amends Metro Code Section 2.62.04F and Metro Code Section, anyway, special event permit fees, uh, y'all. And so um, we have deferred this uh, several times um, to look really at kind of the, the framework of this. Um, Council Lady Hurt had some concerns. I had some concerns, um, some of our smaller nonprofit entities. Um, this was kind of updating these special event permit fees. Um, we felt like in these pandemic times when we're not really having many of these special events, this was a good time to kind of dig back into this and, and look how it goes. Um, uh, that said, uh, we did last week, I believe, have a really good call with staff, um, uh, uh, Gordon Richard, uh, Ms. Wallstrom, uh, Ms. Smith, and um, a, a fair number of other uh, staff members. 
And so um, we're not quite there yet, um, but I think we've sussed out a lot of the issues. Um, so I um, am going to uh, uh, make a um, motion on this to uh, defer. Um, uh, Mr. Cooper, can you help me kind of with the, the calendar on this? Um, I'm trying to think uh, subsequent to our last meeting, I think we need to kind of draft up a proposal. I don't think um, by next meeting, we'll probably be able to do that. So would you recommend that I defer to a date certain or um, what What do we need to do as far as deferrals on, on this? Any constraints in that either, regard? Either a, either a date certain or a um, indefinite deferral would, would accomplish it. Um, you could always put it back with a week's notice if you did an indefinite deferral, just uh, whichever you'd prefer to do. I appreciate the suggestion. I'm going to move um, for an indefinite deferral. Um, I think we're we're engaged in this. We're having some good conversation. We're figuring some things out. But this one, it's, it's pretty complex, colleagues. So, um, And it has implications on some of our other right-of-way permitting as far as the framework that we've established. Um, so it's, it's good work, but it's taken some time. So um, with that, I would move an indefinite deferral. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Are there any um, uh, questions or comments um, regarding the indefinite deferral? Okay. Um, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, any no's or abstentions? Seeing none. Nope, okay. Um, all right, we are then moving on. I know that we've got some guests with us this evening that boy, have they been in for the long haul. Um, uh, regarding BL 2020 uh, 333, uh, Benedict uh, Mendez and others, um, I think uh, several colleagues um, have, have signed on to this. Um, uh, myself included, I hope I intend to um, uh, amends Title 12 of the Metro Code uh, to prohibit personal delivery devices within the Metro government's uh, right away. Um, we also, colleagues, have a proposed amendment um, from Council Lady uh, Benedict um, and uh, Mendez. Um, Mr. Cooper, uh, please remind me order of operations here. Um, do we need to get the bill before us and then discuss the amendment, or um, uh, yeah, or ready? you could just you could move right into the amendment if if you want to. Okay. Um, all right. Let, let's do that. Um, uh, do I have a motion uh, for the um, uh, amendment, and then we'll have so Benedict describe. Second. It. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Um, Council Lady Benedict, you are recognized to describe your amendment. Thank you, Madam Chair. So in the analysis packet, um, there, the definition of a personal de delivery device explains that it's a robot that typically makes deliveries using sidewalks and crosswalks. Last month, the state passed a law regarding the use of PDDs, or personal delivery devices, so another acronym for us. So the state passed a law regarding the PDDs, and it provides local municipalities with the option to prohibit these divisive, I'm sorry, devices if it's found to be in the interest of public safety. And so the, um, that's what the original bill was designed to do. Uh, however, in the amendment that I've filed, it will, instead of a prohibition, it will give us a timeline to learn and talk more about PDDs. Uh, to determine if they, you know, if they or how they should be used in Nashville. So the amendment provides a moratorium through December 31st of this year, and if needed, then it will have an automatic extension to April 30th of next year. Um, that is able to be terminated or ex extended based on um, a, a, a council resolution with a majority vote. So um, with that in mind, I move approval of the bill as amended. Oh, uh, okay. Sorry. Okay, so actually, um, so we already have a motion. Um, uh, so we are on on the amendment. Um, so are there any uh, uh, questions uh, for uh, Council Lady Benedict um, regarding the amendment as she described it? Okay, colleagues, I am looking through. Um, Okay, I am not um, seeing any questions from uh, colleagues. Is there anyone else, um, a guest uh, representing a company that might have uh, robots or want to use them? 
um, anyone uh, would like to be uh, recognized um, on this amendment? Um, if so, uh, raise your hand. If you don't have the raise hand function, um, you can uh, just go ahead and unmute yourself. Um, okay, so um, if, if you would identify um, who you are representing, um, I, it's not my intent really to acknowledge um, more than one um, representative. So I see Ms. Sullivan, I see Mr. Wilkes, and I see a Mr. Primo. Um, Mr. Primo, please mute your phone. Mr. Primo with FedEx, thank you. Um, okay. All right. Okay. So if um, if somebody um, representing Amazon would like to briefly speak um, whether or not you support this amendment. Um, uh, so I'm either going to, I don't know, Mr. Wilkes, if you represent Amazon or um, I know Ms. Sullivan does. So Ms. Sullivan, you're recognized. Thank you so much, Chair Henderson, and thank everybody for uh, your, your diligence on this late evening. Um, we do support this amendment, and we've um, been in conversation with Council uh, Councilwoman Benedict and Councilman uh, Mendez. We believe this gives everyone an opportunity to have the conversation, put some guardrails around, and make sure we um, pass policy that's best for, for Nashvilleans. Um, while also providing a great service. So we are very supportive and appreciate everybody working with us. Thank you. Okay, I appreciate that. Um, uh, and then just, uh, let's see. Mm, okay. Um, Mr. Wilkes, do you represent FedEx or Amazon? I represent FedEx. Okay, yes, sir, you're, you are recognized. Yes, thank you. Um, so I guess I would uh, I would echo uh, Holly's comments that um, you know, certainly uh, the the learn the learning approach here uh, is is very um, I think the the right probably way to go about it um, versus um, really a uh, kind of a prohibition approach. So very happy to uh, partner with uh, Nashville and and demonstrate capabilities of the devices, their safety level, and um, uh, really the great service that would be a result of, of their presence in Nashville. Okay, all right, so we are on the amendment. Um, one question I do have, Council Lady Benedict, about the amendment. Um, I appreciate that the December date is about six months out. Um, the subsequent date then is not another six month increment, but is the end of April. Can you speak to why that April date was chosen? I, I, that was something that this actually was an amendment that uh, Council Member Mendez put together. And because he's out of town this week, I became the lead sponsor on it. Um, so he, he chose that date and I don't know exactly why. It is an additional four months. So I guess that gives us nine months um, in total before um, the uh, uh, moratorium would end. But again, you know, potentially that could be extended or um, uh, shortened. Uh, based on the curbs and guidelines uh, uh, that could be put in place should a program uh, be approved. Okay. Um, already, uh, I believe we are ready to vote on the amendment, and then we will be discussing the bill as amended. Uh, all in favor of the amendment um, as uh, Council Lady Benedict presented it, um, uh, please say aye. 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 Okay. Um, is there anyone who is against uh, the amendment? Um, anybody wanting to vote no on the amendment? Okay, seeing none, any abstentions? Okay, all right. So now um, we have the bill as amended. Um, if somebody could move approval, please. Move approval. Second. Okay, um, so the bill as amended is before us with a motion and a second. Um, is there uh, anybody uh, serving on the Public Works Committee um, that would like to be recognized on the bill as amended? Okay, uh, seeing none, um, all in favor of the bill as amended? All right. Okay. Um, anyone voting uh, no or um, against? Okay. Um, all righty. So we recommend approval of the bill as amended. 
Um, thank you, uh, FedEx and Amazon representatives for sticking with us uh, for such a very, very lengthy um, evening. We appreciate you. Thank you for being here. Um, okay, moving on in our agenda, BL 2023-38. Taylor provides the honorary street name designation of Pastor Percy J. Clark Way for a portion of Herman Street. Do I have a motion? So moved. Um, and a second. Okay, uh, colleagues, I, I sent you a uh, forwarded you a letter um, from Councilman Taylor um, where he spoke about uh, Pastor Clark and um, shared um, some uh, really uh, neat things about him. I believe Pastor Clark passed um, in May of this year, um, and uh, as as you have um, uh, had that uh, to read uh, about um, him and his work in the community. Um, uh, uh, I would ask that we just move uh, to a vote unless anybody else has anything else they want to share. Just put your vote. I do not see Councilman Taylor here. I could not imagine that he wanted to stick with this meeting this long, but he did send us a very uh, kind letter um, to explain uh, 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 Pastor uh, Percy J. Clark way. Um, uh, okay, and uh, with that, all in favor? Aye. Um, motion. Did we do? Aye. I I believe. Did we? I thought we had a motion and a second previously. Did we not have a proper motion? I I didn't remember one, but so if we didn't, I, I'm happy to motion. <laughs> okay. We motion did, I, I, second. All uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um. Alrighty. So thank you, Councilman Taylor, for bringing that and sharing with us about Pastor Percy J. Clark. Um, uh, and we express our uh, condolences uh, to the to the pastor's uh, family. So, um, okay, uh, BL 2020-339, Gamble, Mendez, and others authorizes the acceptance or acquisition of easements by negotiation or condemnation for the purpose of construction, operation, maintenance, repair, replacement, and inspection of a proposed stream bank stabilization project along White's Creek South uh, of Old Hickory Boulevard. Uh, do uh, we have a motion? Move approval. Okay, in a second. Second. Council Lady Gamble, uh, you were recognized. Anything you want to, to say about this? Oh, this is just administrative that would uh, help bring much needed infrastructure improvements uh, to the White's Creek uh, area. And that's all, thank you. Okay, um, thank you. Uh, any uh, Anybody else have any questions about this? And scroll down the list. Okay, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Hey, um, Aye. Any no's or abstentions? Okay, seeing none. All righty. Okay, colleagues, here's where we move into the consent agenda. We have 22 bills on uh, second reading on consent. Um, and so what I did colleagues is I asked staff, um, I do not have to read these captions in full, but I do have to state uh, the bill uh, number and then just a very uh, brief, uh, quick uh, two or three words about it. Um, so bear with me um, as we do these 22 and we'll vote on them all uh, as one. Thank you for sticking with me. We are almost there. Okay, um, BL 2020-340, Welsh, Murphy, and Henderson. Again, I'm reading these all onto a consent agenda. Um, this is the Dumas Drive Stormwater Improvement Project, two properties in the 300 block of Dumas Drive. BL 2020-341, Murphy, Henderson, and Hager. Uh, this is for the Bighorn Drive uh, Stormwater Improvement Pro Project, three properties located in the 4,000 block of Bighorn Drive. BL 2023-42, Rutherford, Murphy, and Henderson. Uh, let's see, authorizes Metro government. Uh, we're accepting uh, water, sewer manholes. This is on Pettis Road, um, South Point Phase 3. Um, okay, BL 2020-343, Murphy and Henderson abandons uh, sanitary sewer mains, et cetera, um, uh, for property located at 3864 Logistics Way. 2023-44, uh, Gamble, Murphy and Henderson, um, it 
abandons existing public water mains and easements um, and accepts new of all that um, at Lowe's Lane unnumbered. BL 2020-345, Sledge Murphy and Henderson authorizes the Metro government to accept a sanitary sewer manhole for property located at 280 12th Avenue South. Moving on to page eight, BL 2020-346, Parker Murphy Henderson abandons existing public sanitary sewer mains, sanitary sewer manholes, et cetera, at 905 Elvira Avenue. BL 2020-347, abandons existing public water main uh, easements, accepts new public water main uh, at property at 100 Blue Hills Drive. BL 2020-348, Hager Murphy Henderson abandons existing sanitary sewer mains and easements accepts new, also to include fire hydrant assembly at 616 Hadley Village Boulevard. Uh, BL 202349, Murphy Henderson abandons uh, public uh, sewer mains, uh, manholes, easements, accepts new of the same for six properties on Murfreesboro Pike, Old Hickory Boulevard, and again, Logistics Way. BL 202350 Cash Murphy Henderson abandons existing water mains and easements um, and accepts water mains fire hydrant assembly at 2100 Belmont Boulevard. Uh, 202351 Styles Murphy and Henderson abandons uh, sanitary sewer easement rights uh, for property at 2901 Old Franklin Road. BL 202352 Styles Murphy and Henderson abandons uh, sewer mains, sewer manholes, and easements and accepts new of the same, also a fire hydrant assembly uh, and easements, uh, property Ashford Trace unnumbered, known as Treehaven Phase 5. BL 202353 O'Connell Murphy Henderson. Uh, abandons uh, sewer mains, easements, accepts new of the same at 810 Division Street. 202354 Styles Murphy and Henderson authorizes the Metro government to accept new sanitary sewer main and sanitary sewer manholes or property located at Murfreesboro Pike unnumbered. BL 202355 Benedict Murphy Henderson abandoned an existing water main and easements and to accept a new water main uh, and easements or property located at 200 Porter Village Circle. BL 202356, uh, O'Connell, Murphy, and Henderson abandons uh, water main easements, accepts new of the same, plus a fire hydrant assembly uh, at property located at 700 First Avenue North. BL 202357, O'Connell, Murphy, and Henderson abandons existing public uh, sanitary sewer main, manholes, easements, and accepts new of the same, plus a fire hydrant at 1221 Broadway. Page 12, um, BL 2023-58, Withers, Murphy, and Henderson abandons existing public sanitary sewer main, accepts uh, the new uh, at 700 South 12th Street, letter from Councilman Withers to approve, uh, appreciate his diligence. BL 2020-359, Sledge, Murphy, and Henderson abandons existing water and sanitary sewer mains, um, accepts the same, plus a fire hydrant and easements at one Bushy Court. 2600 Fessy Park Road, 708 Berry Road, and Berry Road unnumbered. BL 2020 360, Mur Withers, Murphy, and Henderson abandons existing uh, water and sanitary sewer mains, fire hydrant assemblies, accepts the same um, uh, for property located at 804 Dew Street with a letter from Councilman Withers to approve. And uh, BL 2020-361, the final item on our very long agenda, Rosenberg, Murphy, and Henderson abandons existing sanitary sewer mains, sewer manholes, fire hydrant assembly, and accepts the same um, uh, property located at 7114 Charlotte Pike. Having heard all 22 items on the consent agenda, approval. is there anyone is there anything that needs to be removed um, from consent? Um, and that question goes to both staff and um, and council members, anything from a procedural standpoint that needs to be uh, removed? Madam Chair, I'd like to remove all items from consent. <laughs> no. Madam Chair, I'd like to remove Freddie O'Connell from our committee, please. <laughs> second. I second Mr. Okay. Rose's motion. So we have a motion and a second for the consent agenda. All in favor, please give a hearty yes. Or Good night. Aye. 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 Okay. Okay. All still uh, present, voting in the affirmative, not seeing any uh, nays or abstentions. 
I thank you uh, colleagues for sticking with this. This was a long evening with a lot of bills and a fair number of things that were somewhat contentious and complicated. Um, so with that, uh, we are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. This has been a service of the Metro National Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.